Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. Um, this is question number five now from the October 2023 Pure Mathematics P3 paper um, from um, came, sorry, sorry, from Edexcel International A-Level. And here we have a curve with equation y equals lin x squared plus k um, over x squared plus k, where x is an element of the real numbers. Okay, so this domain is all real numbers. It says where k is a positive constant. So k is a positive constant. Show that dy dx is equal to ax brackets b minus lin x squared plus k over x squared plus k all squared, where a and b are constants to be found. Okay, so we need to basically differentiate this expression here. We need to differentiate this and show that we end up with that. Okay, so now, when we differentiate something like this, um, we have a quotient of two separate functions, which um, to differentiate we have to use the quotient rule. Okay, so the numerator you must call u, so u is lin of x squared plus k. You don't have to put the modulus sign here because k is a positive constant and x squared is going to be always greater than or equal to zero. So it's always going to be something positive here. That's why there's no modulus sign, no need for it here because the lin of it will be a positive number here anyway. So there'll be no, no issue if it becomes negative and then this being undefined. So that's fine. And v is equal to x squared plus k. So we have to find u dash, which is the differential of this. Now remember, when you have, if you have, for example, y equals lin of x, and you differentiate dy dx, you get 1 over x, right? But if it's lin of some function multiplied by x or some function of x, then you have to multiply by the differential of what's inside the function using the chain rule. Here we're going to have 1 over whatever's inside the function, which is x squared plus k. But then we have to multiply by the differential of what's inside, which is 2x. So we end up with u dash being 2x divided by x squared plus k. And v dash is pretty simple. It's just going to be 2x. All right. So when we use a quotient rule, so dy dx is going to be equal to, you always start with the v and you multiply it by the u dash. So you're going to have x squared plus k multiplied by 2x over x squared plus k. Then you have minus, and then you multiply u times v dash. It's always minus, always, and always u times v dash this way. So you have 2x times the lin, 2x times the lin of x squared plus k. But then you divide all of this by v squared which is x squared plus k all squared. Now, this formula is in the formula sheet. Okay, we should know it. It's in the formula sheet. All right. Now, this simplifies because x squared plus k and x squared plus k will cancel out. So you're left with dy dx equals 2x minus 2x times lin of x squared plus k over x squared plus k all squared. So if we compare this to what we have to show, it's kind of like very much similar, okay? This is what we had to show, okay? And this is what we've got so far. And you can see that there's not much left for us to do to get what we need. Simply, you can see there's a common factor here of 2x. And that's the ax part there that's outside this bracket. So you're gonna write 2x, you're gonna open a bracket, so 2x times something gives me 2x, that must be 1. And 2x times something gives me all of this. So it has to be negative and it has to be, the 2x is already there, so I need the lin of x squared plus k. And then that's all over x squared plus k squared. So we can see that we have got exactly what we had to show. In this case, we can see a is equal to 2. And we can say b is equal to 1. We don't have to write the values of a and b, but just to show you that that's A and that's B. I have to write it in that form. And we have answered the question, or the first part of the question. Now we're going to go on to the second part of the question. And um, we've got these results from the previous page we might need. It says, given that C has exactly three turning points. Okay, turning points are places, okay, where the gradient is equal to zero. 
where a curve turns, the gradient is equal to zero. So this curve has exactly three turning points. Okay, so at the turning points, we know that dy dx is equal to zero because dy dx is the gradient function. It tells us about the gradient of the curve, and we know that the gradient is zero at the turning points, so that's where dy dx is equal to zero. So we have to solve the equation 2x times 1 minus the lin of x squared plus k over x squared plus k, and all of that squared is equal to zero. When we solve this equation, we find the turning points. So if this is equal to zero, then the numerator must be zero. You could also think about it, let's multiply both sides by the denominator. Zero times that will get rid of it, and you're left with 2x times 1 minus lin of x squared plus k is equal to zero. So here we have a product of two factors, like a times b. Okay, and, and the product of the two factors is zero. So either one factor is zero, either 2x is zero, in which case x is zero. So that's one turning point. That's one of the answers, x equals zero. It's not in terms of um, k, that particular one. That's why it says, where appropriate, give you answers in terms of k. Now, the other turning points are when the other factor is equal to zero. If b is equal to zero, then this will also be zero. So if one minus the lin of x squared plus k is equal to zero, that will be another you know, um, possibility here. So we can now rewrite this as lin of x squared plus k is equal to 1, okay? Because if you subtract 1 from both sides, they're both negative, so you'll end up with a positive. We can say add this to both sides. You'll have 1 equals this. All right, now, how do I solve this equation? Well, we have to understand what this means. Now, if I have log to the base A of B equals C, I can rewrite that in index form. I can say that A is the base, C is the power, and B is the answer. That's how that kind of, you know, translates in index form. So in this case, we have log to the base E. Lin means log to the base E of x squared plus k is equal to 1. So this will mean that E to the power of 1 is equal to x squared plus k. That's what that means. So we can say x squared is equal to E minus k. So x is equal to plus or minus the square root of e minus k. So we have x equals the square root of e minus k and x equals minus the square root of e minus k and so we have our three solutions. Those are the three turning x coordinates of the turning points. They didn't ask us to find the coordinates, just the x coordinate of each turning point. So we don't have to find the y coordinate of each turning point. If we did, we'd have to put those x values back into here and you know, find the answers for the y coordinates, but we don't have to do that, so we can stop there. All right, the question didn't require us to do that, it's only three marks here, and we've got the three turning points. Okay, so there's the answer to part B. Now, for part C, it says find the upper limit to the value for k. Now, we've seen that x equals plus or minus the square root of e minus k. Now, we know that this will be undefined if whatever's under the square root sign becomes negative, right? So e minus k has to be always greater than or equal to zero. It can't be less than zero, otherwise you will have a negative under the square root sign. So in this case, you can see that e must be greater than or equal to k, which means k must be less than or equal to e. If k is less than e or equal to it, you'll have zero or greater than zero under the square root sign. If k becomes greater than e, Okay, then you'll have E minus something bigger than itself, so it's going to give you a negative answer. So we can say the upper limit for K, the upper limit to K is E. Okay, so there's your answer to part C. And that concludes the question, question number five from the October 2023 Pure Mathematics P3 paper from International Level Excel. Other questions from this same paper can be found in the playlist. That will appear, a link for that will appear at the screen, this area of the screen at the end of the video. You'll also see a link appearing here for the playlist for um, the topic of differentiation from P3, quotient rule, product rule, whatever, chain rule, these different things which are in P3. you also find here a link telling you, um, or you know, if you haven't subscribed, you click that link, you'll subscribe to my channel. And over here, you can also watch a video that takes you, or tells you how to find my index 
documents which will help you to navigate my channel in a much more efficient manner. Thank you for watching and see you soon.